start. I start now with this uh, session. And as you can see, this is semester one revision session before uh, the exams of semester one, in two, uh, I think in two weeks from now. Uh, and as I said, uh, we have some of the chapters that we studied together online. I didn't include all the chapters that we studied together. Uh, we have only five lectures, uh, three lessons uh, in, in real. They are the revision geometry that we studied together. We have the powers lesson and we have the prime numbers lesson. Uh, these uh, lessons, of course, has objectives that we should make sure that you understood all those objectives. In the geometry revision, again, we will revise together uh, the line or the straight line, what is a line, what is a segment array. Then we will study the positions of lines with respect to each others. Then we'll talk about angles, kinds, pair of angles definition. When we talk about pair of angles, what do we mean by this? Then we will talk about the bisector of an angle and the perpendicular bisector of a segment. In the second objective, of course, again, we will see what are powers and how we calculate them. Together, we will see the powers rules. There are rules that we apply on powers. These rules are very important to understand and also to, to memorize them. Then we have the powers of 10. Uh, how we apply the PEMDAS or the order of operation in calculation of a numerical expression, how we write a number in scientific notation. Then we will identify prime numbers and composite numbers. We will decompose a number into prime factors. Then we will see how can we find the LCM and the GCD of two numbers, of course, using the prime factorization. So first of all, the geometry revision. I want to see Adam. Adam, can you unmute, please? Adam? Yes. Can you tell me, Adam, please, what is a line or and what is a segment? What is a ray? Can you define this? What is a straight line first, Adam? Can you tell me what is a straight line? Do I read them here or no? What do you know about a straight line? Tell me, what do you know about a straight line? A straight line, uh, it begins with a point and it doesn't... Uh... Uh, it doesn't have an end. It has a starting point, you mean? Yes. No, this is not a straight line. This is a ray, right? Yes. Because the ray, Adam, has a starting point, but it doesn't have an end point. While a straight line doesn't have a starting point nor an ending point, okay? So it extends from both directions. So this is the straight line, okay. Adam. This one okay. is a straight line. This one, you see line X, Y, it extends yes. from both directions. So we can extend the straight line X, Y from both directions. That's why we say this is a straight line. While the one you talked about, we call it a ray. The ray has an end point, but extends from the other side. So from from side P, it cannot be extended, but we can extend it from side Q. No. Yes? yes? Um, what page is it on the book? Uh, this is, uh, this, these are, this is a revision lecture. This is not from the book. Uh, this was a revision from last year. It's not in grade seven book. Oh, okay. You can find you can find the lecture of this lesson as a PowerPoint uh, on the drive. It uh, it is written it is written on the on the lessons that I included in the in the exam on the paper that they send it to you. The lessons included in the exam. Okay. So oh, now, okay. yeah. so now, if we talk about a segment, this is a segment AB. As you can see, that a segment AB has and has two ending points, 
and its length is known. So AB, I can measure it using a ruler, while XY here, it cannot be measured because it extends, and PQ cannot be measured because it extends from both directions. Any question about the line, the line segment and the ray? Do you have any question? No. Does anybody have any question, guys? No. Okay. Now I want to ask, uh, I want to ask Aya. Hi, Aya. Hi. Can you tell me, Aya, if I have two straight lines, how can these straight lines be with respect to each other? Or what is the position of their lines with respect to each other? How many positions of lines do we have? Parallel, two. What are they? Parallel and? Perpendicular. You said we have two positions, you told me? Three. We have a three. What is the first one? Parallel. The second one? Perpendicular. And the third? In Intersecting lines. Okay. Can you tell me which lines we call them? We, we call them parallel lines. The lines that that are next. Do parallel lines Aya intersect with each other? No. So parallel lines do not intersect. Okay, what do you know about intersecting lines? How many they points of intersection do, do they have? One. Yes, one point. Now, if we talk about perpendicular lines, what do you know about perpendicular lines? Do they intersect? Yes. What do they form in between each other? 90 degrees. Yes, thank you, 90 degrees angle. So this is a practice about parallel, perpendicular, and intersecting. Uh, I want to ask, I want to ask Zainab. Zainab Asi, hi Zainab. Hi, Miss. Please, let's, let's look at exercise, the match exercise, this exercise, the point, the line segment. Do you see this exercise where I'm pointing? Yes. Okay, tell me Zainab, if I am talking about a point, which one is a point? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or H? D. Yes, D is a point. Can you tell me, Zainab, also what is a line segment? Which one is a line segment? B. Yes, because it has two ending points. Thank you, Zainab. Now I want to ask Leia. Hi, Leia Dayek. Hi. Please, Leia, can you tell me which one is a line? Line A. No, we said that a line extends from both directions. G. Yes, G is a line. Which one is a ray? You're asking me? Yes. <laughs> oh, a ray is A. Yes, thank you. Now I want to ask uh, Hala. Yes. Please, Hala, can you tell me which one are parallel lines? E. Yes. Perpendicular lines? F. Thank you. Now I want to ask uh, Maya. Hi, Maya. Hi, Maya. Can you tell me which one is the angle? Yes, miss. Which one? It's the C. Yes, and when we talk about the midpoint, can you tell me what do we mean by the midpoint, Maya? Yes, it's the point in the middle of the line. Yeah, which one is the midpoint? It. Thank you, Maya. Yes, so these are a practice about what I talked now. Now, if I'm talking about angles, an angle is what we, when we draw, uh, two rays, this is the first ray, we call it an arm. This is the second ray, also we call it an arm, where they intersect 
they form an angle in between and the point of intersection is called the vertex of the angle. So in any angle, we have two arms or two sides. We have a vertex and the angle is formed in between here. Uh, can you tell me, Rehab, hi Rehab. Rehab? Rehab, are you still with us? Rehab? Rehab? Okay, can you tell me, Sari? Yes. Okay, can you tell me, please, uh, what do we use to measure or to draw an angle? Which ruler do we use? Uh, we use a... Uh... Do you know the ruler that we use to, to, to measure or to draw an angle? It's half a circle, right? It's a semicircle, I think. Yes, what do we call it? What do we call it? It has a name. Look down here. What do we call it? Oh, the protractor. Yeah, so we use the protractor to draw or measure an angle. We use a, a, a ruler that has the shape of a semicircle and we call it a protractor. Uh, if we have an angle and we measure this angle, according to the measure of the angle, we classify angles into four kinds. So we have four kinds of angles. If the measure of the angle was exactly 90 degrees, its kind is a right angle. If the measure of the angle is between zero and 90 degrees, we call it an acute angle. If the measure of the angle is between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, we call it obtuse angle. And if the measure was exactly 180 degrees, we call it a straight angle. Again, I want to ask Adam. Yes, Adam. Adam? Yes, miss. I want to ask you a question. Suppose I gave you an angle that have the measure of 65 degrees. What kind of angles is this? I can't hear you. Okay, now do you hear me? Adam? Yes, yes. Do you hear me now? Not really. Okay, if you have an angle which measures 65 degrees, what kind of angles is 65 degrees, right? Acute, obtuse, or straight? Obtuse. We said, Adam, if acute. it is... I mean, acute, acute. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. thank you. It is an acute angle because it is less than 90 degrees. Yes. Yes. I want again to ask... I want again... Yes? Uh, I didn't answer because I was in the bathroom. Who's this? Rehab. Okay, answer me now, Rehab. Okay, can you answer a question now? Okay. If I gave you an angle which have the measure of 90 degrees, what kind of angles is it? Right, acute, obtuse, or straight? Uh, Equal 90 degrees, what is the kind of this angle? Right angle? Yes, thank you, Rehab. It's a right angle. Yes, thank you. Now we move to the next slide. Now I will talk about a pair of angles. When we talk about a pair of angles, the word pair means two. So here I'm not talking about one angle only, I'm talking about two angles. What is the position or what might be the position of two angles with respect to each others? In the first position, this is angle one, this is the first angle, and this is angle two, this is the second angle. In this position, we can see that angle one comes and angle two is directly 
uh, coming after angle one. They have a common vertex and they have a common side or a common arc in a common arm in between. In this position, the two angles we call them adjacent angles. Adjacent means they come after each other. The second position is complementary angles. What do we mean by complementary angles? If we add the measure of the first with the measure of the second, if we add the two measures, they will exactly give me 90 degrees. For example, if we have an angle 40 degrees and an angle 50 degrees, if we add 40 degrees with 50 degrees together, they will give me a 90 degrees angle. So this position of complement is said complementary angles. The third position, in this position we have two angles, together they form a straight line. If we add these two measures, their sum is exactly 180 degrees. So in this position, we call them supplementary angles. Vertically opposite angles are very easy. Why? Because if we have any two intersecting lines, they intersect at this point. These four angles here are formed and they are called vertically opposite angles. Each two pair or each pair vertical to each others are equal. So this angle one here between these two lines is equal to angle four because they are vertically opposite. Angle two and angle three are equal to each others because they are vertically opposite. Now we will apply this question about the pair of angles. <clears throat> Again, I will ask Aya. Can you unmute Aya, please? Yes. Okay, I want to ask you a question, Aya. Please look at, mm. look at this drawing here. We mm. have first a big angle, this angle ABC, this big angle is a right angle, right Aya? Yes. How many angles do you see in this big angle? How many angles are there inside? Two. Can you name these two angles? Right angle and obtuse. No, listen to me. I have, uh, I'm asking you a different, inside, inside angle A, B, C, inside it, how many angles do we have? A, A, B, T. A, B, D and? DBC. Yes, right. So ABD and DBC. First, Aya, because they come after each other, what kind of angles are they? Adjacent, right? Yes. Yes, because they come after each other, they are adjacent. And because the two of them form a right angle, their sum is 90 degrees. Let me go back to the, uh, to the, to this, uh, to this uh, slide. I said, if their sum is 90 degrees, what kind of angles are they? Right angles. No, right angle if I'm talking about one angle, but if I'm talking about a pair, their sum is 90 degrees. Look here, what kind of, of pair are they? Complementary. Complementary yes, angles. complementary angles. So they are complementary angles. So what do we mean by complementary angle? If we add the measure of ABD, plus the measure of DBC, uh, both, yes, their sum is how much if they are complementary, how much is their sum? 90 degrees. Yes, 90 degrees. So if I subtract 90 minus 19, I will get this angle, which is 71 degrees, okay? Yeah. Did you get this, Aya? Yes. This is very important. Now, let me again move to uh, Zahra. Hi, Zahra. Uh, hi, Miss. Okay, please, Zahra, look down at figure number three here. What do you see here? Do you see a right angle or a straight angle? Straight angle. 
What is the straight angle? It's, uh, I think. Yes. Um. I think it's a. Um, it's a supplementary angle. No, if I'm talking about one angle, Zahra, it is, it is as we said, a straight angle, right? But inside yes, this yes. straight angle, as you are saying, we have two angles. What do we call them? What did you say we call them? A supplementary angle. Yes, supplementary. Supplementary, their sum is how much, Zahra? 90 or 180 degrees? 180 degrees. So if, if angle JKM was 100 degrees, what will be the measure of MKL? Um, 100 plus, uh, um, yeah. What will be the measure of MKL? It is all, all the angle is 180. If part no, of it yes. is 100, what will be the other? 100. This is 100, Zahra. But the other angle, it will be what? To become 180, it will be what? 80? Yes, it is 80. So this angle is 100 and the second angle is 80 degrees, yes. These are the supplementary angles and the complementary angles. Now, if we talk about the bisector of an angle, if we have an angle to draw its bisector, we should divide the measure of the angle by two. Why? Because the bisector always divides the angle into two equal angles. So if angle AOB is 40 degrees, where will we draw the bisector at which, at which measure? Let's divide 40 by two. What is 40 by two? 20. Yes, yeah, so OC will be drawn on the 20 degrees. So angle AOC, its measure will be 20 degrees and angle COB will measure also 20 degrees. This is the bisector of an angle. Don't forget that the bisector of an angle divides the angle into two equal angles. This is the definition. It's very important to know the definition of the bisector. Now, if we are talking about the perpendicular bisector of a segment, suppose, for example, we have a segment AB and we want to draw its perpendicular bisector. First, we should get the midpoint of AB, as Maya before said. Uh, if I wanted to find the midpoint of AB, I divide the measure of AB by two because the midpoint will be at the middle of the segment. So, first, I say that O is the midpoint of AB, then I draw a perpendicular line to segment AB at the midpoint. So straight line D is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. This is the perpendicular bisector of a segment. Of course, we have studied together the powers lesson. We said that the general power form, don't forget it, it is A to the power N. So any power is expressed in this form, A to the power N, where A is the base and N is the exponent. So A is the base and N is the exponent. For example, if we have two times two times two times two times two, and we wanted to write it in a power form. Here I want to ask, please, uh, Sari. Yes, Sari. Yes. Suppose we have this multiplication sentence here, Sari, and we want to write it in a power form. What will be the base? The uh, base? Yes. The, the two. base, yes? Two. Yes, the base will be two. What will be the exponent? Five. Yes, because it is repeated five times. So it is two to the power five. Now, if we have a multiplication sentence and we want to write it in power form, as Sari said May before, I? yes? Um, I didn't understand it that much. Who's talking? Leia. Okay, keep with me, Leia. This power, you didn't understand it, you mean? Yes. Okay, stay with me. For example, Leia, if I, if I gave you four times four times four, right? 
Yes. And you wanted to write it in power form. How do we write it in power form? We ask, I want to know the base and the exponent. We ask to know the base. What is okay. the number multiplied here? What, what number are we multiplying here? Four. So the base will be four. How many times are we multiplying four by itself? Three. So the exponent will be three. Okay, uh, okay, Leia? Yes. For example, if I gave you 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, the number repeated is 10, so the base will be 10. How many times is it repeated? Five times, so the exponent will be five. That's it, okay? Now, if you are given any power and you should calculate its answer, for example, if I asked you calculate nine to the power five, you cannot calculate it unless you write it in power form. So we write nine to the power five is nine times nine times nine times nine times nine. Why? Because we should multiply the base by itself as the exponent. Also, six to the power two is written six times six. Here, I want you to, to know something. Whenever, the, yes. Um, when uh, when you told me like if you wanna if I wanna calculate nine to the power of five, can't I just put it on the calculator nine times uh, five? Or you can by you five? can do the answer on the calculator, but you should show me that you have written it as a multiplication sentence. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and you should write this multiplication sentence, then you can calculate it on the calculator, okay? Now, okay, thank you. Okay. Now, if the exponent is two, we always read it squared. So this is red six squared. If the exponent is a three, we read it two cubed. This is how we read them. Now we have important rules of powers. These rules you should memorize and understand well. Any number to the power zero, so if we have any number to the power zero, this number always gives me one. For example, 99 to the power zero is one. 211 to the power zero is one. 5 to the power 0 is 1. This is a rule. Any number to the power 1 always gives me A or the number itself. For example, 100 to the power 1 is 100. 50 to the power 1 is 50. 1 to any exponent always gives me 1. For example, 1 to the power 5 is 1. 1 to the power 7 is 1. 1 to the power 11 is 1. Now, these rules are very important. If we are multiplying same base, different exponent, the base stays as it is and we add both exponents. For example, three to the power four times a three squared, we keep the base of three and we add four plus two, it gives me three to the power six. Now, if we have a fraction in between parentheses and outside, we have any exponent. This exponent outside, for example, if we have exponent 4, we give it for both the numerator and the denominator. So I will get 7 to the power 4 over 3 to the power 4. Now, if we have a base and two exponents, this rule is called a power of power. Here, we keep the base as it is and we multiply the exponents. If we have multiplication of different bases and same exponent, we multiply the bases and we keep the exponent as it is. Please understand these rules well. Now, if we are talking about powers of 10, why are these powers special? Because they always have a base 10. For example, 10 squared is a base of 10, because is a power of 10. 10 cubed is a power of 10. 10 to the power 4 is a power of 10. If I gave you, for example, 10 to the power 5 and you want to find its answer, it's not necessary to write a multiplication sentence 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 it's not necessary we can know the answer directly from the base we take the one and we add zeros 
as the exponent. So 10 to the power 5, we write 1 and we add 5 zeros. 10 to the power 9, we write 1 and we add beside it 9 zeros. Now, we have talked too much about the order of operation. If we have any numerical expression and we want to find its answer, we should apply something called the PEMDAS. We should first start with the parentheses, then we go to exponents, then we do multiplication and division. After that, we do addition and subtraction from left. Now, in this slide, I'm talking about also an important thing called scientific notation. To write a number in scientific notation, we should write it in this form. A times 10 to the power M, a number multiplied by a power of 10. Always this number here, it should always be a number between 1 and 10. It should not be less than 1 and it should not be greater than 10. Okay? So, for example, if we have this number, 973, and I want to write it in scientific notation. First, I ask, is the number 973 between 1 and 10? No, it is not. I should make it a number between 1 and 10. How do we make it a number between 1 and 10? We should use the point, the decimal point. 973 is a whole number. And in a whole number, we know that the point should be to the right. So where should I put the point so that this number becomes between 1 and 10? I should put it between 9 and 7. So my number will be 9.73. How should I know the power of 10 I am multiplying with? I write a base 10, and to know the exponent, I ask myself, the point was here. How many digits did I move the point to become between 9 and 7? I moved it two digits, so I write 10 squared. Now, in this number, it is a decimal number. It has a point. So I ask, is this number between 1 and 10? No. I should make it a number between 1 and 10. Where should I put this point? I should put it between 4 and 9. How many digits did I move it? I moved it one digit. That's why I multiply by 10. Now, if I gave you 7, I also ask, is 7 between 1 and 10? Yes, it is. So I should keep it as it is. I should not change it. I needed 7. Any number kept as it is, always we multiply it by 10 to the power 0 because it should not be changed. These are the scientific notation. Finally, when we talk about prime numbers, prime numbers are the numbers that has only two divisors, one and themselves. We should always be memorizing the first five prime numbers. They are very important because we always need them. Two, three, five, seven, eleven. Please memorize these five numbers because we always use them especially in prime factorization that I want to talk about now. For example, if I gave you a number and I asked you decompose it into prime factors, I write, for example, I'm asking you to, to decompose 60 into prime factors. So first I write 60 and I ask, can we divide 60 by 2? Yes. So here I write 2. If I divide 60 by 2, here you can use your calculators. So if I divide 60 by 2, the answer is 30. I write 30 down here. Now also 30, can we divide it by 2? Yes, so I write 2. 30 divided by 2 is 15. Also 15, I can divide it by 3. It cannot be divisible by 2. So the answer is 5. 5, we can only divide it by 5. The answer is 1. Always to know that you are done with the prime factorization, the answer of divisions should be one. Here on this side, I don't want to see only, I want to see prime numbers. I wa don't want to see a four or a six or a nine. These are not prime numbers. So after I finish the prime factorization, I should always write this sentence. 
60 is equal to, because I have two, two times, I write two squared times three times five. So this is how we decompose a number into prime factors. To choose the least common multiple or the LCM by prime factors, we should do for both numbers the prime factorization. Mm -hmm. And from the prime factors, we always choose the more common factors with the highest exponent and the non-common factors. Here I have two squared and two squared. They have the same exponent, so I take two squared. Do I have a five common? No, but in LCM, we also take the non-common factors and we also take the three squared. How do we choose the greatest common factor or the greatest common divisor? We choose the less common factors with the least exponents. I want to talk about a very important slide. This slide is very important. Whenever we have two consecutive numbers that come after each other, directly I say their GCD is one and their LCM is their multiplication. Consecutive numbers mean they come after each other. For example, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Their GCD is one and their LCM is the multiplication of the numbers. If I'm talking about multiples, for example, the GCD of 8 and the 24 is 8. 24 is a multiple of 8, so the GCD is the smallest 